and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? Um, I'm doing okay. Um, yeah. I started soundproofing where we record because we're famous now. I know. We have three new followers. All of the technology. <laughs> yeah, we're so high tech up in here in our, in our sound studio. Oh my god, we have a sound studio. We're just like legit now. <laughs> it's cool though. I mean, I'm excited to see the quality change in our series as as we go on, especially um, since we have this. We each have a mic now, um, yeah. So that's nice. Um, and we're we have quite the nice little podcast area set up here in the office at our house. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm really looking forward to that. By the way, Donna, what are you wearing tonight? I'm wearing a dress constructed entirely out of microphone condoms. Oh. But, like, the phone ones, not the disposable ones. <laughs> so it's, like, real poofy. It's giving me a lot of shape, giving me a lot of figure, you know? Yeah, I can I can totally see it. It's yeah. a little strange, but I, I love it. Yeah. I live, bitch. And I they're live. all different colors, so <laughs> it looks like a craft project gone wrong. Yeah, no, it's, I totally get it, because my, <laughs> my outfit tonight is also made of foam, but uh-huh. I decided that I didn't want to wear a body, and so I'm really just, like, a foamy potato. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but, I mean, my headpiece is really cute like it's just a square foam thing over my head that I spray painted the word hair on yeah nice it's, it's, I, dig it's, it. I live it <laughs> that gave me a good idea you know if we ever need more foam uh, for soundproofing the walls we could just staple a pair of your pads up here <laughs> they would take up at least half the wall <laughs> same though <laughs> both my pairs out. of pads damn or the ones that you won from Camp Wanakiki as a as a prize. Oh gosh, yeah, I, I haven't worn those. those in a long time. I like those pads. I mean, they're yeah. durable. Yeah. Goodness, they. Oh, so it's funny. I actually, um, just a small side note. So, like the the pads that I bought. Um, like that are like the pants bottoms ones. Yeah. So pretty much um, what I found is because they were sliding down. So what I did is for the first time in my drag aesthetic in probably like six or seven years, um, I actually don't wear my first layer of um, shaper oh, shapewear. Okay. Like because I always just like it's almost like that's how I know I'm getting ready is that piece of shapewear. Yeah. And um, but because the pads slide down because it's just like a soft whatever. Mm-hmm. So I um yeah so I put it on the pads onto my bare skin and then uh-huh. they didn't move all night because oh. I got sweaty and gross. Nice, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. <laughs> it was weird with my waist cincher being on my skin. I've never really had that before. I mean, like, oh, the yeah, pads were kind of there. a little bit weird, huh? Yeah. Usually my tights, like, go up, like, or... or so you put the, um, the cincher on after you put the shaper on? Um... No, well, yes. So, so I had a so I had a waist cincher kind of thing. Uh-huh. S- uh huh. Sorry, a shaper thing. Shaper. Yeah. And then I had the tights and everything. Uh huh. And then I had the waist cincher, and then I would put over a shaper on top of all of that to like give me the wumana. Yeah. That's like a panty shaper. So. My shaper is always on my skin. I always put it on my skin and then cover it with the or my my cincher is always on my skin and then oh, I cover it with the shaper. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So oh. there's no, like, lines of the oh, shaper. Oh, I, I do have a top shaper that also goes over it, but yeah, oh, I okay. never... Um, yeah, actually, it's funny, because my panty shaper, I actually put it underneath, because it'll keep the pant- keep it from rolling in case I move too much or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the top shaper helps with that. Yeah. Yeah, so we did five minutes about how me and Donna do drag. I so. know, right? <laughs> like, Just for some of y'all's knowledge, this is also a drag podcast, even though it doesn't seem like it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? We are looking so amazing, and we talk about our costumes all the time. We, we, it's true, but we're talking about the election and the results <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this time. Yeah, I'm really excited about that, actually. Um, um, we're going to get back to doing true crime eventually, but we just wanted to cover this, right? Yeah. It's really important that we do. Like, th- so much... Um, okay, so if you haven't checked out our last episode, um, it was our election episode, mm-hmm. but by the time we had actually filmed it, there weren't really any election results. Yeah. Um, not really. And actually, there was... So go listen to that, listeners. We'll wait. And we're back. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> The one thing that from the last episode, just to catch you up, is I was kind of in the middle road, dejected a little bit, mainly because I wanted a result. Like, I wasn't sleeping well. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. And even though I was certain Biden was going to win, like, it's 
it doesn't feel certain enough until like it's called, right? Yeah. And so that's that's kind of where I was sitting. I mean, I get that. I get that. I I think that I was watching, like I said in the last episode, I was kind of watching everything unfold as it had been predicted, mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, it's really happening this way as everyone has been saying it would happen. <laughs> so right. it was, you know, like I think I think a lot of people would predict that Trump would react the way he did that he would see that Biden was clearly going to beat him, so he'd call... I mean, it was a very predictable move. And even what he's doing now is really predictable. Yeah. Because he's trying to raise as much money, basically, to cover his ass before he gets out of office. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And and it's absolutely kind of disgusting, because... the. So one of the things that's really bothersome about this is I don't know if this has happened in other elections. I didn't do my research beforehand about a sitting president not wanting to concede. Mm-hmm. I know that they always talk about the the phone call, like yeah. um, you know Hillary conceded, you know stuff like that. Um, yeah, just uh, so him not doing that is just kind of indicative of who he was as a president mm-hmm. for us as a whole, which I just kind of get, and I'm really disappointed by. Well, yeah, and I, I find that the the biggest thing that I'm seeing from the other side is, like, you just watch, remember, they're, they're trying to, like, compare um, this to the 2000s election, and it's apples and oranges, honestly, because that election, they were tied and needed, one of them needed to win Florida between Bush and Gore. Um, there was about a 500 vote count difference. Right. And Bush ended up winning, and or you know the Supreme Court gave the election over to Bush, um, even though Gore got the popular vote. Um, Biden is ahead by thousands of votes in the yeah. states that he's mm-hmm. won over. Biden is ahead by fourteen thousand in Georgia, Good and grief. the lawsuits are there. Georgia's just been ordered to do a complete recount, um, a, a complete hand recount, and Yikes. so. That's gonna. I mean, but that's what drives me crazy, because even if he gets Georgia for some unknown reason, like what does that just suddenly hinder the validity of our elections or something? Like I don't really understand what we're getting at here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it won't happen. The the fact of the matter is, is like Biden is ahead by such an insane lead that it's like I don't know what they're thinking. It's like they're just trying to stall the process as much as they can. I don't know. I think it's honestly a lot of what's happening right now that we're... It's it's really, like, theater. It's theatrical. Yeah, it what's, does feel very theatrical. What, yeah, because it's all... And drama-filled. Like, yeah. It's, it's gross. Like, I've, I've read Trump's Twitter, and, like, Twitter is pretty much flagging almost everything that he's writing because there has False. been... I heard NPR, NPR of all news stations were just like... Because it's a definitive statement to say mm. it this way. They're like... Trump is saying that there is election fraud and there is zero evidence. Like, that is a bold statement for any news station to make. Yeah. They're like, there is zero evidence that this is true. And because at this... But the thing is, the one thing that they can get away with is because at this point, there is zero evidence. If evidence comes out in the future, then obviously they'll report on it. But they're like, as of this moment, there is zero evidence that there is voter fraud. Yeah, yeah. There, and the thing is, like, they'll report on it, and if they if they make claims that are misleading, they because they are a legitimate news organization, will have to retract their statement and give out an accurate statement. Yes. Here's the difference between sources like NPR and then shows and stuff like Fox News. Mm-hmm. Fox News um, can get away with having some of its segments be entertainment-based, and they can go on and spout misleading information if they want to, and not have to air retractions for it. So, and and a lot of these sources that a lot of these people go to that are far right are the same way. Um, if they are like an actual like news organization, it, it, if in order to not be considered libelous, they have to like say uh, a retraction to their statements if they're false. And that so, makes sense. So yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, you have to be careful where you're getting your information from these days. So yeah. trusted uh- sources, all of that. I, a lot of people... I, I'm online doing my content moderating right now, and it's fucking crazy how misleading some of the stuff out there is. Like, Well, and what really gets to me is that it really wasn't even, f- like, fake news, per se. Like, I hate that that became a word. Yeah. Like, it might just be embellished news or news that might have some of the details omitted or something like that, but it wasn't just blatantly false. Yeah. Like, or I'll say, like Donna said, they would have to do a retraction. And I just... 
and it's really messy out there right now. Like I mm -hmm. said, like Twitter is doing its own content moderation on the president of the United States yeah. tweets. Like how weird of a society and world do we live in where that is a thing? Where there is a disclaimer message that this is a m every like almost everything that he's posting. There's almost like, everything. It's it's ridiculous. Like I really want, and I, it's not even that I necessarily want him to concede. Like right now, here now, he's allowed. Like it is his. Um, you know, right to have a recount, especially yeah. with it's, when, when it's within 1%. Yeah. Um, but it's also a waste of American time, like time, money, all that stuff. Because even if he got Georgia, it he wouldn't win still. Like, he wouldn't have had enough le electoral votes. Like, yeah. So I don't get what we're getting at here. I don't either. I, just I, don't. I think he's buying time. I think that's all it is. He's for the buying. lawsuits to go through. Yeah, for all of the legal battles that he's going to have to fight, I think he still has to make money um, because I think that he's probably going through a lot of legal trouble. Um, and yeah. and uh, financial trouble right. and so I think that he's trying to drain out his donors <laughs> As, and that's sad that's so fucked up like mm -hmm. he's he's trying to drain these like people that work hard for their money yeah. um, so then he can fight his his legal trouble do you know what was some kind of something that's really interesting to me about I saw this because I was really disappointed to see how many people voted for Trump like and actually there was a lot so 70 million people right now think that you know Trump did fine yeah. He, he's great. Like, he's fine. Yeah. Um, and that hurts, and that's sad. But yeah. um, when you look at the map, the map is really alarming. But then I... And you know that... We all know that the map is a false representation of people. And so I love the one that was the gift that we all saw, which says, you know, land doesn't vote, people do. Mm -hmm. And it just really goes to show you, like, where the majority of the people in the United States actually live and where the majority of the people in the United States live and actually vote at. Yeah. Um, and it's mostly New York and, like, California. Like, yeah. that's where they vote. It's the most populated places, yeah. Yeah. And so when people... So me and Donna used to hear all the time in Colorado that like uh, you know California just makes all of our decisions and I and I never really got it at the time um, and now I do because mm -hmm. obviously they have a crap ton of electoral votes but wouldn't you think that yes the issues in but you get to vote on local issues in your elections yeah. like if Colorado wants to do this and California wants to do that that is a thing but when it comes to president and vice president like um, this is the person leading the country so shouldn't it be the person who like is best for the country not just necessarily your backyard yeah like that's that's what's kind of weird to me that people are like oh yeah it doesn't matter how we vote because california will just wipe us out anyway yeah like, that doesn't make any sense to me yeah yeah um it doesn't to me either but i don't know i i feel like abolishing the electoral college is something we need to seriously consider <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's, it's got it got us in trouble um a lot and so yeah. we, that system needs to go and it's and it's founded in such a weird weird like archaic and barbaric system and stuff like mm -hmm. that with counting people as half and it, it's, it's gross yeah i mean it's gross and so i mean some of the roots of the electoral college like as most of you know is that after slavery most there were still a lot of black people in the south to which means that the south would have more electoral votes because of that but yeah. they actually considered black people to be like half a person yeah <laughs> so that's that that's that's not a system that we should still be using today no. <laughs> that's just eh, well that ain't the tea. i mean and just like you know there was always the whole issue with like faithless electors like mm -hmm. not honoring what their people um, decided on and you know, I just I think that it is a very archaic way to decide how um, we get our next president it's it's very archaic agreed I um, fully agree so um, oh I forgot to ask um, it's because it's just kind of my thing at this point um, Donna how are you doing this evening I will let you know after this brief commercial break Bjork Friday is an anti-Thanksgiving tradition, originally started as a celebration of Bjork's birthday, as well as a collaboration between Marla Darling and Tacky Wacky Inc. in 2018, the show has been a sold-out success. Due to the pandemic, Bjork Friday will be held virtually on November 27th. This year's show features performances from One Half Nelson, Anjay Tifa, MX Marchan, Sunny, Jocelyn Knobs, Tula Petals, Aphasia, Miss Aura, Jasmine Rain, and more. 
This show is closed captioned for accessibility. For tickets, seven to twelve dollar sliding scale, you can Venmo at Darling Smith or at Wolfgang Tacky. Type in Bjork and include your email address to get the secret link to the show Bjork Friday, November 27th, 2020 at 8 o'clock p.m. Hosted by Wolfgang X and Marla Darling. You can spell that D-A-R-L-I-N-G-S-M-I-T-H or W-O-L-F-G-A-N-G-T-A-C-K-Y. It's a podcast. Check it out. With Coco and Don, a telepodcast. Check it out. Tune into what they tell you podcast. Check it out. With Coco and Don, a telepodcast. Check it out. Well, Coco, I'm feeling like we did it. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, Joe. Gosh. She sounds so drunk. She does. We did it. <laughs> we did it, Jill. I just want her to teach me how to like make the best Thanksgiving dinner. God, I want to drink with her heavily. Have you seen that video of her like explaining to like the the news yeah. person? She's like, "Are you gonna do a dry brine or a wet brine?" Trying to like explain want, how to do a turkey. I want her to invite her to my house and just have coffee. I know. I just want to eat her food because like, it looks great. I just want to sit in a room with Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, <laughs> and Michelle Obama and get cookies. That's what I want. People are like, what about Barack? And I'm like, I said what I said. (laughs) Actually, I I do. And it's funny, I actually, I had this conversation again recently um, with a friend of mine uh, that they said, they're like, well, who would you think is like an upstanding president? And I said, well, I I really like Barack Obama. And they're like, well... one of the highest approval ratings of any president. And and, and I don't like it. Top five. And I was talking to Don about this. Like, there is a difference. Like, why can't... Like, I need to get people to separate this. Personhood versus how great they are as a president. Yeah. Like, this person is wonderful. Like, when you look at your kids or your spouse or, like, your teachers or something like that or your doctor. like, Like, let's say your doctor, for instance. If your doctor was a like a horrible racist and treated people like garbage mm-hmm. and made fun of like disabled people or something like that, like do you like that person isn't a great person and even though you're not necessarily needing them to be a great person for what you need from them, you just need them to be a great doctor. Yeah. Some people also want them to be a good person. Yeah. Like you wouldn't have a primary care physician if like people really wouldn't do primary care physicians unless it really mattered to you about the care that you receive from another person. Yeah, I want the person decisions for you to be like morally sound. You know, yeah. I don't want a crook who has twenty six sexual assault al- allegations yeah. as my primary care physician. Let alone any you know place in my life. Um, Agreed. That's the thing. I um you know I, I know that right now it was very much so like a settle for Joe type of situation. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel hopeful, you know, I feel now that Joe is our president elect and Kamala is um, our vice president, I feel like we were really were in the battle for the soul of our nation. And that was Joe's slogan all along on the Mm -hmm. campaign trail was that we're in the battle for the soul of our nation. And um, I feel like we won out with heart and with, a candidate and a public servant who has done a lot uh, for our country and not a greedy, greedy um, failed businessman like we've had who throws tantrums. And granted, there are so many issues with Joe Biden, too, that we could talk about. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic, relieved and happy. Yeah, there's there's something about the devil, you know, and then being like, you know what? Like, it's like that dog, that meme of the dog sitting in the fire. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah. And, like, I saw one recently that said, this isn't fine. No. Like, that's that's been recently, in the last four years. Yeah. It It was so weird the way that... Did you feel it? Did you feel relieved? Like, Absolutely relieved. I slept yeah. like a freaking baby. I'm still catching up because, like, today's Veterans Day, and I work at a place that I get to have today off, and I slept in till, like, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I was holding my breath 
And now I'm still technically kind of holding my breath a little bit. Like, January can't come fast enough for me. Hasn't it also felt like we've been holding our breath for the last four years, though? Oh, absolutely. Like, I feel like we, as a nation, let out the biggest collective sigh of relief when we found out that, Yeah, we were you know, done. Like, yeah. As, as humans, like, you have to imagine that when, like, because it's trauma. Like, can you imagine the amount of trauma that certain people are going to go through because of this? Like, they just are. Like, it's mm -hmm. not healthy for your cell, soul, and you need to, like, check it on yourself. But this was all really traumatic about not knowing, like, when you've... Because you turned on the news and you saw a black man being killed or something. And then you turn on the news and seeing Trump not really stick up for anything that really mattered morally. Like, yeah, like, you saw Trump being really lackadaisical with coronavirus and it even more to the point our president caught coronavirus because mm -hmm. he doesn't make sound good decisions yeah like yeah the most powerful man in the, in the country and he caught coronavirus yeah. because he wasn't doing anything to actually care about it yeah and then <laughs> we saw that comedy special where he like and I never actually saw the interview but I just don't doubt that this was true that he was literally trying to think about ways to solve it um, mm -hmm. in a press briefing and like you know people were just like maybe that could work you know yeah. maybe like I just I, <laughs> just no anti-science 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 he was very anti-science and then also just appointing people in like the largest like energy energy sectors that are climate deniers you know climate right. change deniers and it's going to be nice to have a president who under, understands and wants to listen to the expert of scientists and um, yeah. not just base things off of their feelings. That's the thing. It's like conservatives will throw that at us liberals as much as, as they can. Facts over feelings when they use an awful lot of feelings in making their decisions. For, yeah. Um, Calling us a snowflake. Right. Oh, heavens. Right. So, and I'm not going to be smug about it to anyone as much as I want to be because of how Trumpers have treated me mm -hmm. <laughs> online mm -hmm. over the last oh, yeah. four years, and you especially. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I, I, actually, I've thought about this, and I saw a meme that said, you're not allowed to tell people how they react to trauma. Like, you're not allowed to tell people how they respond to this. Yeah. Like, if somebody wants to be overjoyed and happy and like be like post online like we won we won we won you guys suck or whatever they're allowed to do that because they dealt with four years of a person who yeah. made them feel very afraid and unsafe for a very long time and so even though i agree with donna and that sentiment of where i'm not gonna be too smug i kind of want to be a little smug like yeah. human, like the human side of me wants to be a little smug i want I'll to too. oh and i I'll, I'll just you know i'm gonna clue you into this listener as i told donna this um <laughs> So back in our hometown of Grand Junction, and Grand Junction is part of Mesa County, and the two surrounding counties that we would visit were Montrose and Delta County. And they all voted for Trump. They're very red. Um, and so I went to the news station um, after Trump lost this election and read every comment and felt so great about <laughs> myself because... You're not there. Because I'm not there, and they <laughs> lost. <laughs> they lost. Oh, oh, my gosh. They lost. And they were so vicious in those comment sections. Oh, they're so Always. vicious. They're, and it was so funny. They're not my president. It's a fraud. Biden sucks. Oh, my God. The world's going to end. And I'm just and looking, and I'm just like, uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Go on. So, QAnon. Yeah, all of your your B, right wing BS. Yeah, I didn't Pizzagate. Com I didn't comment a thing because I feel like I've grown finally. Yeah. But I did. I read every single one of those comments and just had this small piece of that. That that was my smugness because I did it to myself. I was on my phone. I didn't tell anybody about it. <laughs> and I needed that moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. I... Honestly, my mental health was always affected every time I would get attacked by all those trumpets. They were they were a lot to deal with and they were the thing is it was like radicalized like it was like nationalists, you know? Right. And um it was I don't know, it's it's just relieving to um, be in the situation that we are now. I mean, not currently, but <laughs> where we will be in January. Yeah. Um, I, so with that, I kind of want to ask you, what are like the three biggest things you want to see out of a, a Biden-Harris presidency? Um, I want to see... So I... 
so we kind we kind of talked about this before, but I I do want to see a hard hard look at police reform. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to see some sort of resolution when it comes to kids in cages. Um, I really do. Um, And I know that these sound like liberal talking points, but these things really keep me up at night when I think about them. And then I know that people want to say like, you know, like Biden built a lot of those cages and regardless if that may be true or not, I was like, those cages exist and they need to not exist. And we need to have a better system for immigration here. I feel like like, this is supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, like, and it's supposed to be the land of opportunity, mm-hmm. and this country was built on the backs of immigrants and slaves and indentured servants, so, like, yeah. I don't understand why suddenly we are just like, oh, no, we're homegrown proud, like, no, that's not, like, I, I literally, I think I told Donna this a while ago, and I might even have said on the podcast, when I was driving for Uber here, actually not... I can't remember if it was here or in Colorado. Basically, it was a guy who lived here, and he said he's undocumented, and he was talking about how um, what he would do, what you did back in the day, is that you would come to the States, you'd get work for the summer, and you'd send it home through the whole time you were working in the States and go home and whatever. And he said he used to do that every year, but then, like, his family, it was hard on his family, so one time he brought his wife up here, and then they had their baby, and so they just stayed because they just thought it was easier because they had opportunity. Like, it's not all, like, murderers, thieves, and rapists who come up here. Oh, no. Sometimes it's just work. Um, yeah. It's not. Sometimes it's not even the refugee thing. Sometimes it's literally just as simple as work. Yeah. So you had the racial justice, um, immigration, and then... What is yeah. the third thing so, that you want to see worked on the most? Well, and I think I don't want to. I don't want to use the pandemic, obviously, because I feel like yeah. that's a um, that's a give. That's a that's easy, a given. That's I think for everyone, we want to get over out of this situation. Yeah. yeah. What I want to see for me personally, which I know I should probably choose something that's a little bit more science based, but I really want them to stop like. I, I want them to either figure out like student loans or figure out health care. Like it's it's one of those. Like yeah. people are just buried in monstrous amounts of debt, debt. Um, because of student loans or health care or both in some of our cases. And yeah. so I would just really like to see them like I would love to see either universal health care or I would love to see um like even a lottery to get like two million people student loans forgiven mm-hmm. or something like that. I don't understand why college is so damn expensive here. Yeah. But yeah, seriously, I'm crippled in debt with that. I think my student loans are probably sitting at like forty three thousand dollars. Yeah. Um and I know some of my friends are sitting at like ninety nine and hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Like yeah. you do realize government you will not get that money back. No. They will die before yeah, they pay all we, that back. Definitely. I'm I don't think I'm <laughs> nowhere near paying mine back right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I definitely agree with that point as well I think number one racial justice and I think along with that a complete redoing of the prison industrial complex Mm -hmm. and our justice Mm -hmm. system oh yeah Um, I think that that means you know uh I think Joe's already laid out a pretty nice plan for drug offenders to to mm-hmm. be completing treatment rather than I mean like they're planning on doing here in in Oregon too, um, mm-hmm. where drug offenders complete treatment rather than it being treated as like a crime where there were victims involved and they have to go to prison for that. Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, I I think that that's something that's extremely important. Um, mandatory minimums, or I that's something that they need to work on as well. Yeah. Um. So all of that. Um. And uh, just uh, releasing people for past drug charges and mm, working on reho- rehabilitation over punishment when it comes to our prison system. Yeah. Um, second, climate change. I, uh, you know, I need a, a president that believes in moving towards a clean option and a green energy. And yeah. um, I, I think that climate change is extremely important and that we are we need to try and get other nations to be on board with us rejoining the paris climate accord i think that's going to be one of the first things that biden and harris do because um uh getting back with our allies and uh Uh having that uh foreign policy be Mm -hmm. be better is going to be extremely important because trump has embarrassed us in front of (laughs) Hundreds of other leaders. Trump's is a, Trump has definitely embarrassed us on the world stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think my last one... 
uh, yeah, it's got to be like healthcare or yeah. or yeah, healthcare or education. I think healthcare is more important. I think. Yeah, I I think that it is, but it's just it's two systems that are just very messed up. Yeah, um, and it's handled so differently around the world. And yeah. like, I I saw another meme today, and I didn't realize. I, because I never even considered it, but like in other countries, um, sometimes the ambulance visit is free. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, because they're like they're like, why would a pregnant woman take an Uber to the hospital? Why yeah. would she just get an ambulance? And they're like, because she don't want to pay all that money. And they're like, what money? <laughs> and I'm not really happy with Biden's. I mean, he's he has a plan called Biden Care. It's going to protect pre-existing conditions, which is great. You know, like that's all all good and fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but he wants to keep the public option. It's not like universal health care. He's the thing is, Biden is very moderate. He was a very safe bet for conservatives yeah. to get on board with, and I think that I was strategizing way back that mm-hmm. Biden was probably going to be the safest option and be the option that beat Trump because people. Conservatives could get on board with Biden. Conservatives definitely can get on board with Biden. He's like 9,000 years old, actually 76 or three. Mm-hmm. Um, he's old. He does have ways of thinking about things. But I will say that it was really nice that he so lackadaisically and just easily talked about trans issues. And actually not trans issues, but just said the word trans. For on the, the second on, time ever? Yeah, on the world stage. Or was it the first? It was the first time. Possibly the first. Yeah. Um and just on the world stage like that mm-hmm. um, for his acceptance speech and I thought that that was great because you want to normalize those things it doesn't mm-hmm. need to be a 20 minute conversation about trans issues from the president when like during an acceptance speech it just needs to be acknowledgement that these people exist yeah and that was great I would like to honestly see uh, a progressive wave happen uh, in the in the uh, Democratic Party over the next yeah. four to eight years. I, I think that... I don't think that's going to happen so much, but I think um, the more progressive politicians we get into the Democratic Party, mm-hmm. the fu- the more the future of the party is going to like flourish. Right. I think right now, if um, we don't reinvent ourselves, then a lot of younger voters are going to get really disenfranchised. Yeah, And absolutely. I can already see that happening, you know? Yeah. So I think that... The, Democratic Party needs to be more open to progressives um, playing a bigger role. Yeah, and it looks like um, I just checked the election results. It looks like we like it looks like the Democratic Party is probably going to lose the Senate, but it hasn't been finalized yet. Yeah, um, the majority hasn't been said yet, but it does look like Democrats won the House. Aren't we still waiting for Georgia? There's two Senate races in Georgia. Yeah. Um, yeah. So two important Senate races in Georgia. Um, if we win both of those, then we get the Senate, but I don't know really what that's looking like. I know that one of them is looking all right because one of the guys is really moderate and mm-hmm. his the incumbent candidate is refusing to debate him and is very thinks mm-hmm. he's deserves the position that he's in. So I sure. don't see him really winning. Makes sense. Um, unless he does some huge damage control on his campaign. Yeah. So we're in listeners for a wild ride, obviously, over the next few months as Donald Trump tries very hard to hold on to the modicum of power that he's that he still has. Like, yeah. And I mean, yes, he is still the president impeached, but still the pres- still the president. Yeah. And it's one of those things of where he's really unstable, and we have to just be on guard and be aware. So it was nice to feel that you know feeling of relief. Yeah. Um, but then we also have to remember that we still have that person sitting in the White House who can do incredible amounts of damage yeah. to marginalized communities before we get to that inauguration day. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to have another political episode probably coming up either maybe again this month or maybe next month. I know mm-hmm. that the Electoral College meeting um, is on December 14th mm-hmm. and that's supposed to be a big day when things happen where he's really going to need to start transitioning out of the White House Yeah. Um, and so far he has not conceded but um, we'll see what happens you know maybe we'll have a little we'll have little Trump segment updates on whether or not he's conceded every week for this yeah. podcast <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> so thank you for listening to us this week and we will catch you next week listeners bye listeners This has been another episode of HM of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. 
You may follow Coco Gem Holiday at Coco Gem Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at the Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast. Dot com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.